Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video I'd like to show you uh, a little bit more in geometric uh, dimension intolerance and I'd like to access a document on the website kind of go over uh, the definitions for precision and tolerance and some dimensioning strategies before we move on. And this by the way is our second video in our series on geometric uh, dimensioning intolerance and so uh, this is what I want you to do. Everybody I think who in our class knows how to get to the website. For those people who are viewing this outside of the classroom, you can find our website at edi3di.com. That's edi3di.com. And uh, what you'll find is uh, on our homepage. It takes a while for it to load because um, I'm uploading uh, our previous video. But if you go to the classes tab, what you want to do is uh, click the second one, uh, the Central Washington University IET 265 Solid Modeling using SOLIDWORKS Spring 2012. And it takes you to our website. You want to scroll down and go to the Student Resources section of the website. And you want to scroll down here until about maybe a third of the way down and go to Dimensioning Strategies, a guideline for dimensioning and tolerancing in a mechanical drawing. It should bring up this document. So let's start from the top and just talk about some of the highlights. We're going to talk about precision, tolerance, and dimensioning, uh, dimensions and drawings, and eventually some helpful hints. Some of the sec section down here we've already covered in class, and uh, a little bit of reiteration is not going to harm you, so we'll cover some of the details there. And uh, yeah, and then we'll go through uh, right now the, the definition of precision and tolerance and kind of talk about the differences uh, between those. So precision, as it states here in a very generalized manner, is the degree of accuracy necessary to ensure the intended function and that's very general, it doesn't just apply to mechanical drawings, but it applies to a lot of different things. But in regard to mechanical drawings, it typically refers to the significant digits and the dimension used for measuring. And we're familiar with dimensions because we start from the very beginning when we started modeling in SOLIDWORKS, we're putting dimension in, dimensions in right away. And ultimately, as you know, these dimensions make their way into drawings. And uh, these things actually are, are significant. We're going to make modifications to our dimensions in order to get the appropriate precision and ultimately a tolerance, which is going to be a degree of variation that we as designers are willing to accept in regard to uh, items that are going to be fabricated or machined by us. So anyways, that's a kind of a deviation from precision, but let's go back to precision and talk about that a little bit more. So. I describe here is that the more digits used to describe a dimension or uh, the size of an object, the more precise it may be. So in SOLIDWORKS, it also refers to the digits to the right of the decimal. That's how SOLIDWORKS uh, defines uh, precision. So there's a little bit of a variation in regard to uh, its definition here. So we're going to have to meld a little bit between that. There is a difference between what SOLIDWORKS considers uh, significant digits and precision. But typically, those two terms are referred to generally the same thing. So it says here that precision is important in regard to mating surfaces and machine parts, such as a pin inserted into a slot. It is important that the position of the dimension of the referencing it is important that the precision of the dimension referencing some common geometry between the two mating surfaces, such as an axis for the hole or the axis for the pin or the cylindrical surface for both the hole and the pin. Uh, that provides a specific fit is such, I'm sorry, that uh, these references are such that they provide a very specific fit that could be contain, uh, obtained on a consistent basis at a reasonable cost. So here's two key words here, and that is consistent basis at a reasonable cost. Consistent basis means that when you fabricate these uh, items or machine them, when they come off the assembly line or if, uh, uh, when they're done being fabricated, yeah, you can reasonably expect that they are going to be consistent and they're going to be able to fit together just about every time without having to do any rear work. That's what consistent means, but it has to be done at a reasonable cost. You can't put tolerances or precisions on, on things that are so so tight that it's very, very expensive to, uh, to manufacture, fabricate, or machine. You need to be careful about that. So there's always, as a designer, uh, uh, communication between you and the shop floor in regard to what is a reasonable approach in regard to getting uh, the proper nomenclature down in drawings and in your design in order to make sure that it's fabricated at a reasonable cost. Okay, enough said there. Precision is less important in non-mating surfaces, so if we go back to our uh, drawing here and think about, uh, you know, in SOLIDWORKS, uh, how these things are going to go together, um, it's considered uh, appropriate to have a fairly uh, decent precision in regard to uh, this uh, this rod that's going to go in the side of this hole. 
uh, this pin that's going to go inside of this hole. But in regard to non-mating surfaces, it isn't as necessary. There's nothing to mate it to. So typically, when you're talking about precision and eventually tolerancing, typically you uh, want to have uh, precision and tolerance is defined here because you have a mating surface. Anything else that's beyond that doesn't have as much of a precision or tolerance to it. So tolerance is the allowable variation of, for any given size and provides a means of controlling the precision required. That is a test question so make sure you write that down. Know the definition of tolerance and precision. So for mating surfaces, uh, part tolerance is maybe as small as a millionth of an inch. But for practical purposes, they're usually ranged between about uh, one thousandths and ten thousandths of an inch, and with a precision of uh, three to four significant digits. For non-mating surfaces, uh, tolerances can vary, but are right around about uh, ten thousandths of an inch. So, on large parts, the decimal moves to the right, but the significant digits remain roughly the same as it says here. And examples down here in the table are, are shown, and I'm going to let you read this on your own, but uh, for a handheld object, between about 0 and 6 inches or 0 and 150 millimeters. Typical tolerance is about a 64th of an inch or about 15 thousandths of an inch or 0.4 millimeters. And the significant digits are typically about 3 or 4 and that's typical no matter what the size of the object is. And uh, the significant digits could vary depending on the need for precision. But that's uh, typically a decision made by engineers and designers such as yourself or that you're eventually going to uh, your training to be. So, read through this table and you'll notice just, just as a real quick uh, reference here, uh, the, the tolerance will also increase as the size of the object increases. So, uh, if you think about uh, a, like maybe a handheld object, maybe having a tolerance of uh, 15 thousandths of an inch on uh, something that's only a few inches wide for a mating surface, that's reasonable. But uh, 15 thousandths of an inch, if you're building something the size of an airplane or a house, that's not reasonable. So as an object gets bigger, uh, the precision and tolerance also gets larger too, to kind of follow with that. So remember that too, that's a test question. So let's go down here to the section on dimensions and drawings. We'll just go through this real quick. Dimension, extension lines should not touch or cover the outside outline of the object. So remember the dimension lines don't cover object lines. Object lines are typically bolder. If you have a dimension line that intersects with uh, an object line, then it becomes confusing where the object stops and where the dimensions begin. So you always have an offset there. Leaders, for like uh, text leaders, you want to make sure that uh, leader lines are typically in an angle. So this uh, dimension here, which defines uh, the diameter of this hole, uh, the leader line is typically about 30, 45, 60 degrees or somewhere in between or what you don't want to do is have that leader line horizontal or vertical it just causes a uh, perhaps confusion in the drawing and it's a little bit difficult to read carefully choose the size and location and dimensions to make them read readable and easily understood and uh, what, it, what it's stating is that uh, you want to make sure your dimension text is the appropriate value it's usually between 3 30 seconds of an inch all the way up to about an eighth of an inch and I believe by default we're sticking with an eighth of an inch in, uh, in SolidWorks, but uh, typically it's about 330 seconds of an inch that I've seen in architectural and engineering drawings. To have them bigger than that kind of begins to get to the point where you're overwhelming your drawing and it uh, looks kind of big and clunky. So in a way, when you read these drawings, just like reading the newspaper, you expect that the text size is going to not vary very much from paper to paper, year after year. There's a certain... Uh, uh, you know, there's a certain standard out there that should be followed, so you want to make sure that you stick with the default settings uh, using SOLIDWORKS in that regard. So there's two, two different kinds of dimension types. There's a size dimension or location uh, dimension. Size dimension tells you how big something is, like how big a hole is. Location dimension may tell you exactly where that hole is going to be in regard to uh, surfaces that are nearby it. For instance, uh, this hole here. Uh, it doesn't have any location dimensions, but it does have a size dimension on it. Location dimension may say that it's uh, you know, a certain distance from the edge to that hole, either from this edge of the hole or from that edge of the hole. You can assume symmetry in here uh, in regard to the center end of that hole. It probably should be uh, iterated in here, but a location dimension will tell you exactly where that hole is. This 1.5 dimension here and this 1.5 dimension here are also size dimensions as opposed to location dimensions. Redundant dimensions, don't want them. Uh, redundant dimensions can lead to confusion, especially when you're dealing with a non-parametric design software package like AutoCAD. 
Uh, they may seem like they're convenient to put a redundant dimension in uh, one view and perhaps in another view, uh, but you don't want that. For instance, this two inch dimension could be easily put in down here too. You can press the control key, you can drag that dimension down here and have uh, that sort of dimension down here too. You might think it might be convenient, but uh, it may not be. If uh, in a non parametric uh, model, if you're going in here and changing dimensions, you might change that to one and three quarters. This one would stay at two, and then you have this ambiguity and this uh, confusion, this redundancy, which uh, when the fabricator looks at that and says, okay, designer, which one do you want? Um, it could cost money if you do something like that. This is parametric, so we know that if we change this dimension, it's going to uh, change on both sides too. So if we rebuild that, it changes on the top and the bottom. So we'll change that back. One thing to notice about this too, in regard to the dimension we just put in, uh, this is in regard to the leader lines, or uh, the dimension lines. It actually intersects with the objects. You want to make sure you take those dimension lines and pull those down so they do not intersect your object, your object lines. Okay, let's keep going. Center lines are uh, used to show axial symmetry and frequently reduce the need for location lines. So it's a uh, location dimension, I should say. So there's the assumption that this uh, center line is uh, the, the very center of the block as well as the center of the cut in the middle of that block. So we don't necessarily have to have location dimensions in there. But to reduce the chance for error, you do want to make sure that you iterate that in a note or in a uh, um, you know, some sort of annotation in your drawing. So our line should be visible in the drawing as uh, the appropriate line type and the size and series of uh, short and uh, long dashes. So this is a, a center line. If you look at that really close, it's a series of long dashes and short dashes. And what you want to do is make sure your center line extends beyond the, uh, the edge of the object. Now it goes with section lines too. You don't want to put a section in here that intersects uh, with your object like that. Because what it does is it creates a little bit of confusion. You have your arrow down here, which is running into your datum and other things, and uh, it's generally unsightly. You don't uh, really want anything like that. So you want to make sure your center lines and your section lines are moved off to the side when you do that. Hidden lines are used to show the location of uh, some geometry, and these hidden lines are a series of uh, just dashes, and they typically denote some sort of a uh, surface as behind another surface. And you typically do not want to dimension those unless there's no way of doing it. Helpful hints, I'm going to let you uh, go through this, but just, just real quick, create different layers for your uh, different line types. We've done that, never cover another object with a dimension extension line. We've talked about that, avoid the crossing of two dimension lines if possible. Uh, sometimes that's unavoidable. This is an example of something like that, where you have a, a dimension line here, a leader line crossing a dimension line. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but conceivably, you can pull this dimension out, pull this dimension down, and that may satisfy that. But try to reduce that as much as possible. Avoid dimensioning hidden lines unless there is no other reasonable way of doing it. Bring your center lines out slightly, and the same with section lines too. And uh, that's pretty much it for this uh, section. So in the next video, we're going to cover a little bit more on uh, dimensioning and tolerance in regard to uh, some of the parts we're going to put together.